Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work at IBM in the UK. We'll be creating a virtual machine. The IBM is tend to call it an LPAR or logical partition and installing AIX 7.3 into it. I'll be using a Power 10 server. I've got a S1024 and we'll be using a HMC that's running the version 10 software. So you can see what's going on. Here's my sort of architectural picture. We'll be talking to a HMC. It's actually a CR1. That's the previous generation. The current one is a CR2, but perfectly capable of running the release 10 software to talk to Power 10, Power 9, and Power 8 servers. It's called actually HMC 17. Then I have an S1024. It has two VAO servers, which is normal setup. It has a virtual optical library in which we're going to put virtual optical DVDs. These are the ISO images that we're going to boot from. Also got a virtual network and we have virtual storage that happens to be a shared storage pool which makes it nice and flexible for my environment. There are lots of other ways of doing virtual networks and virtual storage. We're just going to cover the ones I have. Then we're going to create a new virtual machine called Demo42. It's going to have a virtual network connection. It's going to have a piece of disk carved out of the SSP. And we're going to connect up the virtual optical device. Then we're going to boot it up and access it via a terminal emulator called PuTTY. It's very popular. You may have come across it. That's going to connect to the HMC via SSH. Nice secure connection. We're going to run the VT menu command and that will connect us to the virtual console of our virtual machine. So let's get started. Hello, this is my HMC um, and we're going to log in. It's a Power 8 CR1 HMC, there's a CR2 out available now, but uh, this will do for running the 10 version of the HMC code. We'll just check that up in here. Look at the about information, and there we are, version 10, service pack 1020. That's the current one available September 2022. What we're going to do in this video is show how to create a logical partition, also known as a virtual machine. Although in the HMC they're actually called partitions, which is even more vague, but there we go. So we're looking at the machine here. It's my S1024, uh, the machine's called Gold, rather than some great big part number. It's got a few LPARs running. You can see one that says uh, no RMC, that's because it's Linux. It needs a few extra uh, packages installed to get it to talk to the HMC. So we clicked on the create partition, obvious once you've found it, and we're looking at the machine level there. We're going to give it a name, uh, Demo42 will do that quite nicely. It's going to run uh, AIX 7.3. We're going to click on the processor details, so the minimum, maximum, and the allocation. This is the number of VPs we're going to have. The LPAR will be two CPUs size, and we're going to set the entitlement uh, here. Um, and you, you can do it in the right order, you can just fix it and then it's happy again with the settings. It's going to be an entitlement of one, and we can increase that to the two to get the two virtual processors fully engaged. Uh, memory in here is in megabytes. Well, who thinks in megabytes these days? So we, again, we're going to uh, increase that. I don't think you could start AIX with one gigabyte of memory. I think you need about four. So we're going to put eight, We've got some spare memory, and we could increase it dynamically up to the 16 gigabytes if we wanted to later on. Just gives us a bit of flexibility. At the top in here, we could do uh, multiple partitions at the same time, and you fill in all the details for them, and then you'll just create them all in one go, but we just want the one in this exercise. So we're doing this in real time, and it's already done. So we've got CPUs and memory assigned to our logical partition, demo 42. Let's have a look, and confirm the virtual machine, then we'll give some disks, network, and a boot device. So here we are at the LPAR level, and we're checking the processors. Yep, they're the numbers we put in, and memory, again, they're the numbers we put in. So let's look at adding some other things, like the virtual networks and virtual storage. On this machine, we only have one internal virtual network already set up and running for the other LPAR, so we just connect this LPAR to the current network. That was quick, wasn't it? Now we go on to storage. There's lots of ways of doing storage with SAN devices, internal disks of the VAO server, but we're using a shared storage pool. The nice thing about this is you connect your LUNs 
from in my case V7000s on the SAN to the virtual IO servers and then me as an administrator on my HMC can allocate the space to my particular virtual machines. So here we are selecting to add some space from my shared storage pool, give it a name, I always use the name of the logical partition we're connecting to. Um, we don't want to think too small for our disks, so we'll give it 200 gig. It's all thin provisioned anyway, so it's not actually allocated until it's used, and we'll connect those up to the two VO servers, so we have dual paths to our disks in case one virtual IO server needs to be restarted or upgraded or something like that. And that's done too. So that's the storage done and the network done. Now, that's it. We've got a, an LPAR that's ready to go, uh, but we've got to have something to boot it off. One popular way of doing that, so we could do it over a network, we can also use a virtual optical device. This is a set of ISO files in one of the VIO servers, and we connect a virtual optical device between the client and the virtual IO server. Then we mount an ISO image into that device and the virtual machine can see it. So we click on the add virtual optical device. The repository is going to be in one of the VO servers. I'll put it onto the VO server one and we give it a name. I always give it the name of the virtual machine and uh, underscore opt. That helps when you're using the LS map command to actually find out which one's connected to which. It takes longer to describe all this and actually do it. So we'll just click the OK button. In the good old days, we had to match up all these uh, slot numbers and the virtual devices together. This is all just hidden there behind the covers in our graphical units interface. So then we select that optical device. You could have more than one. That, um, so we can have more than one DVD online. These are the ones that I have in my repository. A bit of uh, Red Hat. And we've got uh, AX 7.3 TL0 Service Pack 2. That's the latest in September 2022. And it's connected. Next, we need to set up a console so we can control the installation of AIX, and then we can start our virtual machine. I'm going to use the well known program called Putty on my laptop here at home to the computer room about 100 miles away. I'm going to SSH into the HMC, then use the VT menu command to get to a console. So the command is VT menu, then we look down the list of servers, 6 is the one we want, and then the virtual machine. Demo 42 is number two on the list. So now we have the console open, ready, we need to start the virtual machine. Back to the HMC, we're on the right virtual machine already. Partition actions, operations, activate. Couldn't be really more simple than that. Got various options in here. We actually want to stop the virtual machine when it gets to the first menu system so we can select the boot device. That's the systems management services interface. Finish the activation. This is all live. I'm not cutting out any details here. And it will spin for a second or two. And it's already started. We want select boot options, number five. Number one is select boot device. We know it's a DVD, so it's number two. There's lots of DVD devices. We don't really want to sit here working that out. So let's say seven, let the computer do the work. Has a quick look around, what do we got? Well, we only got the one, there it is, number one. And we want the normal mode of boot. We're gonna look at the actual DVD itself. Do we want to exit the menu system? Yes, we do. Now we see the little propeller running down there. That's telling us that it's actually reading something off the media. So that was a good sign. It's all connected up and working. Here it is. Here's the boot. Initial bootloader is up available. Oh, we're AX. That's encouraging. Didn't end up with the wrong DVD. You'll see it for a minute uh, loading up. Do we want to use this console? The answer is yes. So it's one and enter. Little propeller running there again. And what language would we like? Well, I only know English and C, so that's uh, one and enter. Now we can just select the default settings and get on with the install. I like to go to number two, which shows you what it's going to do. 
we can double check things. We can see here it's a new complete overwrite. Well, it's blank disk. There's no choice here. And then there's um, it's going to install the root VG on the first disk. If we there's multiple disks, we could actually make sure we're going to select the right few there. But we can just uh, carry on and install. And we're off and running. If you've used AIX in the past, you all know this bit. For the past 20 years, it seems to have taken 20 minutes to install, but no longer. It's quite a bit quicker on our new systems, particularly using virtual DVD. We don't have to wait for the media to spin around and read all the data off it. First of all, it's going to configure the disk. You can see that happening there. Then it's going to create a root VG. Then it's going to create the logic partitions and the file systems. And we're off and running. You can see there there's 577 is it packages are going to be installed i will cut this out i'll tell you how long i've cut out of the movie but it's going to be a lot less than 20 minutes so i removed nine minutes of the video and we're coming to the end of the installation you can see 95 percent there uh, nine minutes in and we're rebooting so we'll come back up in a second on the disc here we come See the little propeller running in the bottom left. That's reading off the disk now. It's all good encouraging signs. We have this uh, update access keys. This is quite important. We've had a lot of customers who have let their software maintenance and support lapse. Then they run into problems and they phone up AX support and we say, sorry, you haven't paid for any support. And then they have to sort that out immediately before they actually get support. So we are very keen to warn people. You'll see a lot of this on the HMC warning you that you haven't uh, got your user keys set up so that we know that you got full support. It was bringing up various services, a bit of networking. I've seen this before at ProView. It seems to pause. I don't think there's a problem with ProView, but... Um, Maybe it's uh, setting some of the, the kernel details uh, for security and advanced features. But it pauses here for a little bit. It updated one line. <laughs> Come on. There we go. And it's asking what sort of terminal type have you got? This was more important when you had physical terminals and you want the right key mappings for your particular terminal. I just use VT100 because I've actually used the VT100, the genuine article for a couple of years as a developer. I don't know if any of the others work. If anybody's got any comments, that would be interesting. Next, we have to agree to the license agreement and the Swarmer, the software maintenance agreement. Uh, use the arrow keys to go up and down, enter to enter into something, and a tab key to change the a no to a yes. Then to get out of a panel, it's escape three. That's always worked <laughs> on oh, my uh, VT100 emulator in my putty virtual console. So we'll just get through those. It's not exactly rocket science. So then we escape three to come out. There we are. We can change the date and time. Um, the time is wrong because it's always set up in Austin, Texas, the home of AIX. So I realized that I just need to change the time zone. So I'm going to select it from here and take a system defined one. I'm going to hit uh, slash key, then I'm going to search for London, and it should take me straight to you know, Europe, London. I accepted that and accepted it. And then I'm going to come back out and I'm going to go down to task complete exit to login oh no here's the password for the root user ah tricky one now um we have to have large and complex upper and lower case and number punctuation marks in our passwords now if you haven't got one ready it might take you 10 goes to get a combination that it'll accept i just have to have a great big long one that uh, i use as the default Certainly be hard to guess it. Oh, we can go into network com communication. You can either do that after you've logged in or, or do that now. I think I'm going to do that now. So I'll hit enter. TCP IP. 
EN0. We've only got one network, remember, but it's an EN0 that you need to set up. Then we need a host name. Presumably, you've allocated one beforehand. And uh, don't copy my details in here. This is my network. <coughs> Oops, and I've got spelling mistakes. You can do the backspace key will allow you to remove things and you can overtype. I've skipped a lot of typing in here. It's pretty boring. In goes the gateway. Don't use the enter key until you've completed everything. Use the up and down arrows to get to the various fields. Then you're going to hit enter when you've double checked and zam, it's saved all the config and run the commands to get you on the network. Using escape through to come at the menu system, you must take this last one. If you just come out of the menu system, it will take you back in there when it next reboots and you can be uh, scratching your head thinking, why hasn't it started? Until you get the console and see it's waiting for you. Right, here's the root and the great big root password and we're in. There's some information in the file there. OS level minus S gives you the full details. Here's AX7.3 TL0 service pack 2. It came out in 2022 week 19. So back on the HMC, oh, we left it with the activated panel up so we can close that. And if we go back up to the list of partitions on this particular server, here's demo 42. It's running, so it's the HMC is communicating with it, understanding what's going on. We could look at some of the details. It's just sitting there, waiting prompt for me to do something. A few demons running, of course, so a little bit of CPU being used. If we click on the I, we get information about our virtual machine, our IP address, version number, things like that. And if we go in and look at the logical partition, the virtual machine, this is the top panel, which is the general properties. You'll see those two exclamation mark warnings in there. That's worked out when the AX was built, but we haven't got the image update access expiration dates set so we need to get a key from IBM and we can put that into the HMC so the HMC knows that this is a fully supported copy of AIX. Now you might think that feels like uh, the IBM police nagging you to death with these warnings but it will stop you getting to that position where something's gone wrong you phone for support and it turns out you forgot to pay for your support which is not a good scenario for getting it quickly fixed. So we are avoiding a problem there, even though it does feel a bit of nagging for the technical guys. And that's it for this video. Everything's been created. It's all quite simple once you've got an idea of what's going on. Of course, we've got the VO servers already installed, my virtual storage SSP already set up, and my virtual network running before I started. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, give us a thumbs up. It's always good to get some feedback to encourage me to make the next video. I hope you agree that it is now quite simple to do this on the HMC. There are other higher level tools that will automatically roll out complete images onto the disk ready to go and set up with any software that you want or things like backup and security settings. Thanks for watching.